say I like the look in your eye. Tell Bull Goose Looney Harding that R.P. Matt Murphy is waiting to see him. 
You tell him that this nut house ain't big enough for the two of us, and that he either meets me man to man, or he's a yellow skunk. I best be out of town by sunset. <laughs> Billy, you tell this young upstart McMurphy that I'll meet him in the main hall at high noon. And we'll settle this affair once and for all with libidos of lazy. <laughs> you tell him that R.P. Matt Murphy is used to being top man in every situation. And that if he's bound to be a loony, he figures he's going to be the stop down dad and biggest one of all. Well, uh, over, over here, we're, we're the accused. What's acute about you? <laughs> it means we are presumably curable. And, and, and then there are the chronics, uh, a walker, and a vegetable. And they ain't curable? <laughs> oh, what the hell? How you doing, buddy? R.P. McMurphy, good to meet you. How you doing? Randall P. McMurphy, how are you? You got any cigarettes? Nothing but. Get it? Nothing but. <laughs> Hey, hey, buddy! Yeah, bomb! What's that you're making? A bomb to blow up this whole fucking world! <laughs> oh boy, you got competition, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> buddy, my name is Randall Patrick McMurphy, and I don't like to see a grown man sloshing around in his own water. So why don't you go and get dried up? Pull the nails out. What? Pull the nails out. Oh, yes. 
Randall Patrick, committed by the state for diagnosis and possible treatment. 35 years old, never married. A history of drunkenness, assault and battery, disturbing the peace, repeated gambling. <coughs> One arrest for rape. Stash, Terry. With a child of 15. <coughs> Said she was 17. She was plenty willing. A court doctor's examination after She the was so willing, Doc. <laughs> I took the pedal out of my pants. <laughs> Oh, it seems. You have no previous history. Any time spent in other institutions? Well, sir, including state and county coolers. Mental institutions. Uh -huh. No, this is my first trip. But I am crazy, Doc. Here, let me show you. Doc at the work farm. How do you put it? Yeah, here it is. Repeated outbursts of passion that suggest possible diagnosis for psychopath. What do you explain it, Doc? Psychopath means I fight and fuck. Oh, I am sorry. How do you put it again? Yeah, I'm overzealous with my sexual relations. Now, not really serious, Doc. I mean, you ever been troubled by it? No, Mr. McMurphy. I'll admit I haven't. Bit about fighting, I can understand, but I mean, who ever heard of a man getting too much pussy? <laughs> I'm interested in this statement. Don't overlook the possibility. This man might be feigning psychosis to avoid the drudgery of the work firm. Well, Mr. McMurphy, what about that? <coughs> Do I look like a sane man? <laughs> Doctor, perhaps you should advise Mr. McMurphy on the protocol of these meetings. Yes. One of the first rules is the patients remain seated. Oh, uh, sure, Doc. You see, we operate on the principle of therapeutic community. Which? Therapeutic community. That means that this war is society in action. And since society decides who is sane and who isn't, we must measure up. Our goal is a completely democratic war governed by the patients themselves, working to restore you to the outside. It is important you let nothing fester inside you. Talk, discuss, confess. If you hear another patient say something of significance, write it down in the logbook for all to see. Do you know what this procedure is called? Squealing? Group <laughs> therapy. Help yourself and your friends to probe the secrets of the subconscious. Bring all those old guilts out into the open. What guilts? You have to, or you wouldn't be here. Oh, yeah. I think I'm beginning to catch on. Like this dream I was having the other night. Could you maybe tell me what it means? You see, it was me Doctor, in the dream. if I might suggest, Mr. McMurphy might learn best by example. <clears throat> According to notes entered by various patients in the log book, Mr. Harding has stated that he was uneasy when walking in the street with his wife because of the manner in which other men stared at her. He has further said, Quote. She damned well gives them reason to stare, unquote. Yes. He has also been heard to say that he may give her reason to seek sexual attention elsewhere. What reason, Dale? Well, I, I, I can't say that I've been notably ardent. Do you mean sexually inadequate? Well, maybe she's just way too hot for him. Very hot! Well, I bet he's afraid of her. I'm not afraid. Okay, scared! Well, well it might be fair to say... Intimidated. <laughs> Same thing. I see Mr. Harding has also stated that his wife's ample bosom gives him a feeling of inferiority. So why does he marry someone with such big knockers in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a lower fixation. I'll bet he was never weaned. That's not so! <laughs> That's not so! I wanted a woman like woman. One who would not compete. But, 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 who, who might help me she to draw... She commented, Dale, that she finds you less than masculine. Yeah, I like the way you use your hands. How about it, Hardy? You chose a woman who was quite obviously your inferior. Don't you find significance in that? Well, yes, of course, but, 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 but it seemed to me... Well, well I, I theorized that, uh, well, that sexually... Uh, at least. Yeah, you're always saying she's such a good lady. Yeah, what happens in the sack? Complete.
complete psychic impotence. Oh, damn it, why do I always cry? Damn it. Say it, honey, why didn't you just admit you're a fucking faggot? No, I don't get Let the guy alone. Sit down. Listen, buddy, you don't have to take this shit. Doctor, I suggest we close the meeting. Close it until discipline has improved. <laughs> Chickens at a pecking party? A pecking party? I haven't the faintest notion what you're talking about. Well, I'll just explain it to you. See, the flock gets side of a speck of blood and some chicken, and they all go to pecking at it, see? Till there's nothing left but blood and bones and feathers. But usually in the frack a couple of the other chickens get spotted. And then it's their turn. A pecking party? Well, now, that certainly is a pleasant analogy, my friend. That's right, my friend. And that's what that meeting reminded me of. Which would make me the chicken with the spot of blood, eh, friend? That's right, friend. You want to know who picks the first peg? That old nurse, that's who. So, it's as simple as that. As stupidly simple as that. You've been on our ward six hours. And already, you've simplified the work of Freud, Young, and Maxwell Jones and summed it up in one analogy. It's a pecking party. I'm not talking about Fred Young and who's it's Jones, buddy. I'm talking about that crummy little meeting and what that nurse did to you. Did to me? In space. But this is incredible. You completely disregard the fact that everything she did was for my benefit. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm disappointed in you, my friend. You know, I had judged you were more intelligent, but it's evident that I made a mistake. The hell is it, buddy? Oh, yes, and I also noticed your primitive brutality. Psychopath with definite sadistic tendencies, probably motivated by unreasoning egomania. And those talents certainly qualify you to be a therapist, my friend. Oh, yes. They render you quite capable of, of criticizing Nurse Ratchet, even though she's a highly regarded psychiatric nurse with 20 years of experience in the field. But you, no doubt, with your talents, you could probably work subconscious miracles. Soothe the aching id and heal the wounded superego. You could probably cure this whole ward, vegetables and all, in six months, ladies and gentlemen, or your money back. But you tell me that the crap that went on here today is doing something kind of good. Why else would we subject ourselves to it? But Miss Ratchet may be a very strict lady, but she is not some monster chicken pecking our eyes out. No, 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 no. She's not pecking at your eyes, buddy. She's aiming about three feet south. <laughs> Miss Ratchet! She's a mother! She's a tender mother! Don't give me that tender mother crap! She's a ball hunter from way back! Say it, my friend! My, my psychopathic psychic! Now, Francis is a veritable angel of mercy and everybody knows it! She's as unselfish as the wind, toiling tantlessly seven days a week for the good of all! She has no life! No husband! Nothing but her work and everybody knows it! Do you think she enjoys being stern with us? Asking us all those questions? Probing our subconscious till it hurts? Oh no. My egomaniac buddy, she, she is dedicated. She, she wants nothing for herself. She desires nothing more than, than to see us walk out of this place adjusted again and, and capable of, of coping with everyday life. So, so you're wrong, I assure you, because, because, because our nurse Ratchet is, is the kindest and, and the sweetest and, she, and the most benevolent. She's... <laughs> she, You're right about all of it, 
Okay. So why don't you do something about it? Why? <clears throat> because the world belongs to the strong, my friend. The rabbit recognizes the strength of the wolf, so when the wolf is about, he digs holes and hides. He doesn't challenge the wolf to combat. Mr. McMurphy, my friend, I'm not a chicken. I'm a rabbit. <laughs> All of us here. Rabbits. Billy, why don't you hop around for Mr. McMurphy over there? Isn't that sweet? You shut your mouth! All right, my friend. What would you have to do? Raise Jack! Tell him to go to hell! Or try it, buddy, and they'll ship you right on up to Disturbed. Or down to the shock shop. The what? Electroshock therapy. A device which combines the best features of the sleeping pill, the electric chair, and the torture rack. <laughs> hell no. They strap you to a table, and then they touch you on each side of the head with electrodes. And then, zap! Punishment and therapy in one shocking package. Chief Brownden has had it 200 times. What about that part of a doctor? Oh, she requires his approval. That's a formality. He's got 200 patients, a bleeding ulcer, and no desire to make waves. It's the nurses who run these loony bins. Oh, what's the trouble now, my friend? Have you lost your revolutionary spirit? What about that democratic war and stuff? Can't you take a vote? Well, well, why don't we vote? Ooh, that the big nurse can't ask us any more questions. Can't look at us in a certain way. Can't send us to the shop shop. Yes, my friend, what shall we vote? Anything! Can't you see? You gotta do something to show you still got balls. You say the chief was scared. But look at you guys. I ain't never seen a scary looking bunch in my whole life. I'm not. So skin off my ass. How true. And I sure as hell wouldn't want no fiend of a nurse coming after me with 3,000 volts. Oh, well, naturally. Ah, oh, what the hell? Oh, Mr. McMurphy. Welcome to the club. You say she can't do nothing unless she gets your goat. That's right. Unless she makes you crack up in some way, like busting her on the nose or cussing her out. You'd be safe as long as you kept your temper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You birds uh, think you get the chance. How'd you like to put some money on it? On what? That I can get the best of her. You propose to make a wager on that? I'm wagering that I can put a burr up that nurse's butt within a week. That I can bug her so she comes apart those neat little seams. Shows you boys she ain't unbeatable. One week. And if I ain't got her where she don't know whether the shit are go blind, money is yours. <laughs> oh boy! Who's got ten bucks they want to lose? Come on, buddies! You hit or you sit! <laughs> Mr. McMurphy, this deserves odds. Twenty dollars to your ten that you can't do it. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey! Uh, step right up! It's a spin of the wheel, a turn of the card. It's the battle of the century. R.P. McMurphy versus the big nurse to a knockout, decision or draw. Two to one is the odds, boys. Get your money down. Hey ya, hey ya. I think five dollars. Five for the road runner. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's time for occupational therapy.
This is a sure thing. <laughs> Something, Chief? When I hollered, you sure did jump. Thought someone told me he was dead. Then 
And then the don't like me, they can leave me alone. Good morning, nurse rat shit. <laughs> Towels against war policy, too, huh? Well, I'll just take it Stop. off. Stop! Oh, <laughs> you get back in there and put your clothes on this instant. I can't do that, man. Some thief in the night done stole my clothes. Stole? <laughs> that outfit was supposed to be picked up to be laundered. William? Mr. Wong, I got laundry duty. Wong, come here. <clears throat> See, this man had nothing on but a towel. And my cat. <laughs> well? He, he got up too early. He got up too early. You get his clothing this instant, Mr. Wong. I'll spend the next two weeks in geriatrics. Clean and bed pan. <laughs> and you, get rid of that towel at once. Certainly. <laughs> She said I was some kind of symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, Mr. McMurphy. If you finish showing off your manly physique, I think you better go and get dressed. Delighted. Oh, she took me to her parlor and she cooled me with her fang. <laughs> and she whispered low in her mama's ear, I love that gambling man. <laughs> Have you nothing better to do than stand around and gape? I want those room spots. Boots and decorations. 
What do you think, man? I think it's a good idea. And not without therapeutic value. Hell yes, lots of therapeutics at a carnival. <laughs> yeah, scandal you could do is a human bomb at here. And I could make a ring toss in occupational therapy. Myself, I like to run the skittle wheel. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Oh, Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a man.
some of us have been here a long, long time. And some of us will be here a long, long, long time after Europe were done. A, a long time after the World, World Series is over. Don't, don't, don't you see? Don't you understand? I don't understand. I just don't understand, okay? Harvey, what's the matter with you? I mean, what are you guys so afraid of? About a bunch of gutless wonders. You know, I ought to leave her to you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I ought to do. Bust on out of here and nail the door shut behind. You're, you're talking so big, you just how to go bust out of here. Forty ways. Name one. What, you think I'm kidding, yeah? There, the thing Millie is sitting on. Ha, I can throw that through the mesh window. I don't recall anything about psychopaths being able to move mountains. You saying I couldn't lift that dinky thing? That dinky thing weighs a quarter ton. And it happens to contain all the electrical equipment for the station. Hell yes, try it, Mac. You'll shorten the controls and run this whole damn hospital into fucking orbit! <laughs> Who's willing to leave five bucks? So this is more foolhardy than your bet against the big nurse. Five bucks, you peckerheads! Because no one's going to tell me I can't do nothing until I try. Here, all your IOUs from latch. I put up the whole shebang, double or nothing. You're on. Okay. All right. <laughs> Stand back. Scanlon, get the women and children someplace safe. <laughs> oh, man, you give it up? Hell no. I'm just warming up. Here goes the real effort. Daddy! 
That is an outrage. No, ma'am, that is a latrine. You're supposed to get those fixtures clean. Well, they might not be clean enough for some people, but me, I'm planning on pissing in them. Not even love shower. <laughs> I think we'll have to get you another job. Take over, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> One yet, friend. Yet? <laughs> Does the spearmint lose its flavor on the bit goes over now? We chew it in the morning, will it be too far to bite? Visitor! She's my goddamn sister! <laughs> Buddies, this here is Candy Star. Hi, you boys. How's every little thing? <laughs> hey, Pop, what they got you in here for? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, this here is Billy Bibbit. And would you believe it? He's a virgin! <laughs> Beaverton, a real weirdo used to show up at a party with a gopher snake or a white rat, something weird like that. Jesus, a real mania. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, honey. They're a lot crazier outside. Ah, you damn Mr. McMurphy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McMurphy. Okay, okay. So, uh, how you been, baby? I mean, they train you all right? Yeah, sure. The grub, sensational. And the bed they give a guy? Hey, why don't I show you? <laughs> okay, okay. Here? Here? I think she wants to watch. Uh, listen, honey. Uh, you talking about old parties? Kind of give me an idea. I bet I could fix it that we could throw one right here. Are you kidding? And you could bring along Sandra. I told y'all, Sandra got married. Well, she still needs parties. Farewell. 
All those in favor of changing television time to afternoon, raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs>
gonna hurt you. I just wanna. No, come on.
selling that thousand year old gun. <coughs> Took away my canteen privileges, so uh, this is all I got. There you go. Thank you. Don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you can do it. I'm too little. Why 
why don't you give it a try? I'm not big enough. That'd be one way of finding out. If you change your mind, you let me know, okay? I can make book of it. <laughs> oh, that would be a killer. <coughs> like Murphy. <coughs> make me big again. Who doctors? 
and known as my heavy conductor. Do I have a crown of thorns? No, 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 don't holler, Chief. Or if you're gonna holler, make it, make it Gus Ball, okay? That engine. Gus Ball. Oh, boy, I do got a crown. <laughs> hey, Chief, Chief. Wire, briar, limber, lock. Three geese and a flock. One flew east and one flew west. And one flew over the cuckoo's neck. Quite simple, really. 
you have an excellent record in aggressive cases. Aggressive? Why, man, I'm as friendly as a puppy dog. There's no need to do any cutting. <laughs> There's no cutting involved, Randall. We simply <coughs> No, no, no. Do no good to lock them off. I got another pair at home. Dig his baseballs. <laughs> Not warranted, except in cases of uncontrollable violence. He has exhibited violence. You can only say there was a certain provocation. No, Miss Ratchet. Since you brought the matter up in group, rather than staff, I shall state my opinion. I do not approve of surgical procedure in the absence of reoccurring violence. And if it should recur, then we may reconsider. Mr. McMurphy, I will bear that in mind. You behave yourself, boys. Oh, I uh, do change your mind about those extra treatments, Mac. I just love your little battery charger. <laughs> what was that did about surgical procedure? <laughs> I, I, well, I, I guess she means lobotomy. Okay, what's that? Well, you, you might call it a, a kind of castration of the brain. What does it do to you? They, uh, they say he used to be a really rough character. Jesus. Matt, we, we, we've been talking, the boys and I, and, well, well, we think you ought to get out of here. Get out of here? That's right, we figured out a way. As soon as it gets dark tonight, I set fire to my mattress. Then we make a holler, and when the firemen come up, they're going to leave the door open, and they, then we ditch you out. Boys, it's as good as a TV show, and I thank you. <laughs> but it's all in, I missed the party. Party? Have you forgotten? Holy oh, shit! I mean, come on! You don't want me to miss Billy catching in on his virginity now, do ya? <laughs> Look at boys. Tonight that window will be open and I'll sashay right on out. We'll make it a going away party, okay? <laughs> hey, hey, <clears throat> cool it. <laughs> Supper time, gentlemen. Move your face! <laughs> you taking your vitamins? Because I'm warning you, that candy girl. <laughs> Don't you mama murphy me, Billy boy. I want you to burn that woman down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to burn her down. <laughs> you got any bread? How much? Fifty bucks. Fifty? What for? The candy's laying out for the liquor, and then we got turkey to take it. Why are you looking down your nose like that? So, something Miss Miss Ratchet said. What did she say? How how you 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 were always winning things, <clears throat> always coming out ahead. Here you go, big borrow 
I want to ask if I know. She's this. bringing liquor, Turkey. Yeah? Bala scotch and bala vodka. <laughs> Which one do you want? I kind of like them both. Well, what are we supposed to drink? You ain't supposed to drink at all. Any sign? No sign. Oh, boy, I am stupid. How's she going to know the right window in the dark? <laughs> Turkey, turn on the lights, will you? Now that's damn it. Nurse Ratchet, see that more on She's asleep, Turkey. That shit pope never sleeps. <laughs> Cheer on. 
Benedict. Oh, R.P. McMurphy. That's the bride. <laughs> Very well then. Do you, Candy Star, take this man to love and to cherish for such time as rules and regulations may allow? <laughs> and do you, Billy Bill, take this woman to have and to hold until the night shift changes and our rebels end? <laughs> He does. Most merciful God, we ask that you accept these two into your kingdom with your well-known compassion. And keep the door ajar for the rest of us. <laughs> for this may be our final fling. And we are doomed henceforth to the terrible burden of sanity. As comes the dawn, we shall most assuredly be lined up and fired upon with bullets of Paxil, oh. Prozac, oh. and Parazine. Oh. And so, <laughs> go, my children, <laughs> sin while he may, <laughs> we shall be tranquilized. <laughs> getting out of here soon. But I have to do it my own way. You know, sign the papers, call my wife and say, you pick me up at a certain time. You understand? Yeah, but what is it with you guys? You mean, what, what drove us here in the first place? Oh, I don't know. A lot of theories. But, but I do know what, what makes people like you, strong people. Go crazy. Okay, what? People like us. Oh, oh yes, my friend. Oh, yes. Hey! What's happening to the party? Come on, you mother loving loonies. This is old Mac Murphy Tender Bar, and when he bores, let no man scream. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, what you gonna do and declare a war? <laughs> I'm trying never to tell a war on anybody. That was a sorry damn try. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
my instrument, Mercury. I wonder, was there some sort of profit in it? Oh, yeah. That's really cute, lady. Very clever. Trying to make me crack, huh? Well, it ain't gonna work, cause I'm hit. Jesus, Mr.
Hey, yeah, uh, hey, yeah. Uh, come on, suckers. Uh, the game is uh, 21. You hit or you sit. What do you, what do, you do, Scanlon? I wasn't paying any mind. Well, pay some mind. Jesus, if we only knew where they got him, what they're doing, it's been damn near a whole fucking week now. And you know what a guy down at the dining room told me? He told me McMurphy knocked out two aides, took their keys, and escaped. Sounds like that. And which ward was your informant from? The shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me to come and send back to the work farm. Who? Somebody! <laughs> and the loony down in occupational therapy told me that McMurphy had sprouted wings and was last seen soaring in circles overhead, defecating on the hospital. Honest! I'll get a grip. Miss Ratchet, what we want to know is we perfect coming back. Because, because I think we have a right to know if he's. Prefrontal lobotomy. So they've done it? That's not Matt Murphy. No. Nope. Some dummy named Rick Delta. Think so? Factory made. I bet he's right. Jesus has done a pretty good job. Even the busted nose and all. Ah, uh, they can do noses. Look, its eyes is open. Oh, smoked up. Nobody inside. Eyes, just a couple of burned up fuses. How stupid does that old bitch think we are? <laughs> Gee, I wish that Murphy would come back. Hey, hey, you remember the time that he pinched me a scratching on the ass and said he was just trying to keep in touch? And now he's writing the love book, you see, an A cup or a B cup or any old cup at all. I tried that dumb Nazi little nurse, um... The one with the cross? Yeah, she dropped her pill down the front of her uniform and Matt tries to help her take it out and she hollers. Don't touch me, I'm the Catholic! Oh, boy! <laughs> well, Matt, it's <laughs> 
number of weeks. This just this play doesn't go on all by itself. They have to put so much effort into it between learning lines, laughing in the background, <laughs> everything, giving up their free time. And 
as chairman of the group, I'd like to thank them for their dedication and for their hard work. This play would not have been possible without our director. I spoke about Martin on Monday night and I said that it, it was his first full length production. He had done the one acts and we roped him in to do the three act. And I thought, and I said the other night, this is not your first, this is first of many. lighting, makeup, sound. All of these people are very important to us. Those who are on the raffle, those who look after our sponsors, 